The best copper miners on the ASX have put on more than 100% in the last month. Over the last quarter, they've gained more than 300%. And there are five key elements that we need to understand in the copper market to see whether we can still keep trading this and what to be trading in the market right now. To understand those five elements, we go to none other than the top experts in the country, in the world. Some of them are ASX listed, but we're gonna to go to the executives of the biggest copper miners. The five key elements, the first one starts off with the demand side of the equation. Yes, we understand that there is more demand, but how much and how do we quantify it? Well, if we look at a comparison of an internal combustion engine like a Ford, <laughs> Ford or a Holden, then compare that to a Tesla. We're looking at say, three and a half times the amount of copper going into manufacturing a car like that. Then we look at the megawatts per hour being produced from the green energy transition. So the traditional ones like coal and gas, when we move them into wind turbines and solar farms, we're looking at four to six times the amount of copper required to get per megawatt hour. That's a bit of a problem, particularly when we're looking at the wind farms going out to sea, it's a lot more copper. Second point is the infrastructure scale. We're understanding the elements of these key components, the cars, the turbines, but just how much are we talking about here? Well, one 50 megawatt solar, solar facility requires 219 tonnes of copper. And if we're going to charge the 152 million electric vehicles that we're looking to have in 2040, that requires so much more. How much more? Well, we lead into the experts at Bloomberg and they have a calculation or an estimate of 53% increase in demand by 2040. Okay, what about supply? That's only 16%. That is very positive for ASX miners and particularly those who can fit into this equation. What do we mean by that equation? Well, BHP, Rio Tinto and Western Copper, they all explicitly state that current development pipelines cannot meet energy transition demand, full stop. So what about those development timelines? Well, how long does it take? It's an average of 23 years to get a new mine from discovery to production. That's where we start having to break down the individual components to see which ones are the best ones to trade. And do we have competition from the aging giants? Are the existing producers just gonna dig deeper, harder, faster, stronger with more miners? No. Why? Because they, all of them, with the exception of one, all of the existing large producers are either maturing or declining. And that is a problem for the global market supply side, but an opportunity for those trading it. If you wanna dig down into more detail into the top six miners with those huge performances and how they fit into these thematics, Click below and we'll also look at the international peers like the S&P 500 listed ones. I'll go into it in more detail and I'll see you there.